What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another net worth update, spending, saving, investing, all that good stuff. So I'm not going to waste any time today. We're going to jump straight into my net worth update. And this is picking up right where we left off in February. So back in February, my net worth was $108,284, which was where I broke the six figure mark of net worth, which I was very happy about. Very big milestone. And they actually say that once you hit six figures in net worth, your net worth starts to just boom, explode. So I'm really looking forward to that. But we're gonna jump straight into how March was looking. So I'm gonna make this a little easier than last time. I'm gonna have everything that I'm talking about on the screen for you. So I'm not just scrolling around and shifting the screen around a lot like I did in the last video. So learn from my mistake there. Anyway. Just so you know, I fill this in at the end of every single month. So by the end of March, my checking account had $2,532. My savings, $1,951. My emergency fund ended up with $6,722. And just a little context behind the saving and the emergency fund. Every single month, I put $500 into my emergency fund. Plus, I has a 4.5 annual percentage yield. So that's why there's a little more than a $500 growth when you compare it to the emergency fund over in February all the way to March. Now, my 401k number one, which is from my last job, it's called Empower, which is with Vanguard. But anyway, it ended up with $18,234. So quite a bit of growth from February, which was $17,716. And then my 401k that I have now with Fidelity, which is with my current job, I had ended March with $75,199. Again, a big increase from $71,000 in February. My Roth IRA now has $6,377, which is quite a step up from $5,858, which I had back in February. And I'll just say this, I am not playing any games with my Roth IRA this year. It's something that I really wish I would have taken advantage of a lot earlier. So if you don't take it from anyone else, take it from me. It, the earlier you invest in your Roth IRA, the better it's going to be. Because once you cash out your 401k when it's time to retire, the taxes are going to be pretty big. But your Roth IRA, you're not going to have to worry about tax at all because your money that goes in there has already been taxed. That's my mini rant on that. It's just it's something that I really wish I would have taken advantage of because my Roth IRA is doing really well right now. It's up, it's up 44.33% right now. And I've only had it for a couple of years, so it's averaging 20% per year. Then we have my favorite investing account, which is my Weeble account, my own individual investing account where I invest in both stocks as well as one ETF. And I have not touched this account since last year. I've really just been prioritizing my Roth IRA because I wanna make sure that I max out my Roth IRA this year. And I wanna to get to a point where my emergency fund hits $10,000 before I start going heavy in on investing on Weeble again. Anyway, my Weeble account has $26,598 as of the end of March. Uh, previous to that, it had $25,342. So that's a pretty big deal. And again, that was the end of March. The stock market is always going to fluctuate. Uh, we're now in April now as I'm recording this video, the very beginning of April. It's April 5th as I'm recording. But I'll let you know if in case you're curious, my Weeble account is currently up 90.93%. So I'll show screenshots of all the percentages that I'm talking about today so you can see that I'm putting my money where my mouth is. So this is a part of my net worth that I really don't pay any attention to. I actually forgot back in January that I even had money in crypto. Just Litecoin, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Mostly Bitcoin and Ethereum though. But this was maybe like a $200 investment all the way back in 2022. Seems like forever ago, but it's really not. Uh, anyway, my crypto is at $632, which went up quite a bit from $582 last month. I don't contribute to this or anything. It's just been sitting in there for a couple of years. In my life insurance, and this is specifically whole life, I also have term, but I don't include that with my net worth because it's really just temporary. Plus, it wouldn't go to me anyway. So, But my life insurance whole life is currently worth $1,757, whereas last month it was $1,678. So the grand total worth of my assets at the end of March was $140,002 versus last month, which was $132,669. So 
it came up quite a bit in just that short amount of time. This is why it's important to invest because if I had just been saving this whole time, my net worth would not have jumped up like $7,000. To be exact, $7,333 is how much my net worth jumped up in just a month. So that's why it's extremely important to invest. I'm not just saying it just because it's a, a cool or cashy thing to do or trendy thing to do. This is how you build wealth. And honestly, it's, it's how it's always been. That's always how you can build wealth, by investing. Starting your own business, having your entrepreneurial desires and aspirations, that's cool. But the way that you build wealth in general is by taking your income, saving it, using it wisely. And then whenever you get to a position to invest in the stocks, invest in a Roth IRA, invest in your 401k, that's where the wealth builds up quietly. It builds up slowly but surely. Just a few years ago, I've only been at my current job for five years. My 401k at my current job is already above $75,000. Just a few short years ago, I wasn't even making $75,000 a year. So when you put it in that perspective, and I'm 28 now, I can only imagine where that's going to be and where all my other investments are going to be by the time I hit 60. Anyway, ramble over. So now we're going to jump to my liabilities, which is just one thing, my student loans, which is something I'm pretty passionate about not being in a rush to pay off. Just a little background, I because I didn't mention it in my last video. Pretty much when I first got my student loans back, once, once that little grace period was over with and I graduated and I graduated in May, so by December was when that grace period was over, so I had to start paying my student loans back. I was working stupid amounts of overtime. We're talking 70, 80 plus hours a week, and I would pretty much throw all of my overtime, we'll say 90% of my overtime, into my student loans. Prior to now, it was like in the high 30,000s that I owed. And I knocked so much of it down. I was like, oh, man, I can knock this out in just like two more years. But I looked at my savings account and my savings account was looking about sad. I looked at my emergency fund and it was about non-existent. By this time, I had a little bit of money going into my 401k, but it was like 4% of my income. So that wasn't looking great. I didn't have a Roth IRA. I didn't have an individual investing account yet. And, and at the time, I did work in a very volatile work environment and it was volatile in terms of emotions it was volatile in terms of just how the industry was I, I worked in the tire industry i will not be doing that again and overall job security when it came to management level positions which is what i held back then when i was 21 and 22 years old and it honestly just felt like i was walking on eggshells all the time it didn't matter how good of a job i did or how much effort i did it just seemed like people to the left and right of me and including myself your job would get threatened every single day. And if not every single day, at least once a week. You do that again and you're fired. You know, you don't talk to people like that. That's a whole another story. I do have a couple other videos on that. But the reason I say that is because when you work in an environment like that, where you don't feel secure within your own employment and you don't know, like, like if they were to let me go right then and there, basically what I'm saying is, Sure, I would have had a good chunk of debt paid off, but nothing to show for it when it came to my savings and when it came to investments. And that's where true net worth lies in. I'd rather prioritize what I currently need to worry about and what I will need to worry about in the future. So current is having a good amount of money in my checking account and a decent amount of money in my savings account. And then future is investments. That's, that's how I look at it. Paying off debt from student loans, for example, which has a low interest rate, that's looking at my past. That's stuff I did. That's the decision I made when I was like 17, 18 years old to take out those student loans. So they give me 10 years to pay it off. I think it's in my best interest to let it take those 10 years. And if not 10 years, it could be five years, six years. But they went all that time back in COVID times where it wasn't gaining interest anyway. And instead of paying it off early, I put money into investments, which are, like I just told you, up 90%, up 40-something percent. 401ks are up a decent percentage too. So I have already gained more in investments than what I owe in my student loans. Had I paid off my student loans prior, I would have never realized this gain from investing. 
And I'm not saying it's wrong to do it any other way. I'm just telling you logically, money-wise, it makes more sense to invest more. But if you're the type of person where debt is like a weight on your shoulders, then pay off the debt first. You have to do what's best for you. Personal finance is going to be per, uh, personal and specific to you. Now, if this $24,000 was credit card debt, it would be a weight on my shoulders because my credit would be about going down. And the interest rate would literally be eating me alive unless I went hard on paying it down. But student loans, it goes down every single month. As long as I see a downward trend and I have a plan to get it to zero, I'm not worried about it in the slightest bit. Anyway, um, I did have a few charges from the doctor's office last month. I went to the doctor and the dentist. Uh, ended up being $71. I wiped that out. That was pretty simple. But then I also had credit card debt, 168 My credit card percentage, I just went ahead and wiped that out because, again, credit cards, I don't play around with credit cards. When you're dealing with 20% interest rates and beyond, like I don't, I don't got time for it. And uh, you don't got time for it either. So we don't have time for it, so it's gone. Anyway, when you subtract my liabilities from my assets, we come up with a lovely number of $115,994 as opposed to the $108,284 from February. It's a jump up. So I know my assets had a $7,333 difference, but my overall net worth has a $7,710 difference. So my net worth has increased by almost $8,000 in, in, within 31 days. That is amazing. So I'm extremely thankful for that. Honestly, all I'm looking for this tracker, all I'm looking for in this tracker is that my net worth is constantly going up. And I understand that the stock market does fluctuate. So there might be a month where it goes down a little bit, but as long as the overall trend is going up, that's what I'm looking for. I, I never would have expected it to jump up. $7,710. Of course, I've never tracked my net worth before, so who knows how it's been in the past. But right now, I am looking to continue to grow this and end up at $200,000 plus net worth by the end of the year. And I'll tell you something, I, I do have, I, I used to have a goal at the bottom that said $130,000 is my net worth goal. But I think I'm going to smash that goal in a shorter amount of time than I think. So why not reach higher for a $200,000 net worth goal? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, just so we can jump into my spending habits, this is what we're looking at when we look at my budget dashboard. <clears throat> it was a good month. And again, I'm not comfortable with sharing exactly how much I make from my work salary at this time. So I am going to just blur that part out, but I will share my total earnings because I do have earnings from my book and YouTube and, and other things. So my total earnings for the month of March was $7,268. This was take home. And the amount I spent, my expenses were $5,839. And like I was telling you, like I was telling you in my last video, pretty much my biggest area of spending is giving next to like my rent. So I give tithes to my church a lot and um, I love doing it. So that ends up being a big bulk of my income too. Uh, and I'm very serious about working out and stuff. So the gym and other things like that are big things with expenses, but I did pretty good. I didn't really eat DoorDash a ton. I mean, I only spent $205 on DoorDash. And so I think I did a good job of really nailing down what my highest spending areas were and spend a lot less than I usually would. Groceries, I really didn't spend that much either. $377, really not a lot. And again, uh, in February is when I got a gift card that really helped me a lot with my groceries. So as you could probably imagine, I, I went pretty hard with that gift card and um, bought a bunch of stuff that I could just put in the freezer and then thaw out later and then cook. So I've been cooking a lot lately at home and I'm starting to get, I'm starting to get decent at cooking. It's, it's actually not so bad. Plus I'm big into health, so I don't really like eating out as much either just because when I'm at home, I know exactly what I'm cooking my food and I know exactly what I'm eating. When I'm eating now, it's just like, it tastes good, but you know, is it going to about clog my arteries? I don't know. 
So now my wealth and my wealth goal per month is just a thousand dollars, but I was able to save and invest $1,650. Check out my wealth journey episode two video so you can see exactly how I allocated that. It's also up here, but um, it actually tells you what I'm invested in and, and stuff like that that you'll want to definitely check out if you're gonna be interested in investing in the future. Anyway, I'm super excited about it. The future is looking very bright even though it's about dim outside and snowing. The future is looking very bright, and I'm extremely happy that I can have you guys follow me on this journey, and I'm also working on my second book. At some point, I'll let y'all know what the title is, but for now, we'll just refer to it as book two. It's going to go much, much deeper into my knowledge base when it comes to money and life than my first book, The Wealth Journey, did, and it's going to build off the first book in such a way that will add extreme value to you, especially if you've already read the first book. If you have not read the first book, check it out. It is 100% available to you in ebook version, paperback, and hardback right now. Anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.